Thank you, Boris. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, before I start my, uh, my presentation, I want to thank all the speakers uh, who had their presentations yesterday and this morning. Ted, uh, yesterday we heard about uh, technology, driving technology to produce uh, devices that are going to monitor uh, parameters that uh, that, that, that can help get the help of a human being. Uh, I want to start my presentation by motivating you uh, with some uh, facts why uh, it is important to focus on who the target groups for this technology are. Then technology is an enabler, but the benefits we derive from this technology can only be made real what this te technology does in real life. Well, I don't very much buy the idea that said uh, that technology is uh, less expensive. In fact, technology is expensive. Uh, this can be portrayed to these uh, values you can see. Uh, the number of consumer electronics devices that are now available on the market show the strength that up to about uh, um, over half a trillion dollars is spent on on this uh, advanced uh, electronic devices. And the, I wanted to show you, give a presentation that is focused on how these devices are incorporated into the living spaces of human beings to help them to tackle their daily to day problems. In fact, the number of devices that are now all available on the market from this trend shows that it is an exponential rate these devices we incorporate in, in our environments so that they can help the user address issues. They reveal new opportunities. And I'm going to show you here. Before that, I want to show that these are market oriented market facts. We also have scientific facts. Going to. So for the scientific facts, uh, there are some expert groups here in Europe that address how to incorporate this technology into environments. And one of them is a Temnesia that focuses on uh, stimulating research and development to, uh, to incorporate embedded systems into our environments. This here, uh, this, uh, this group is involved with major European industrial sectors with a budget about 2.4 billion with the aim to boost innovation and comp competitiveness in the systems. So in a nutshell, there's a lot of money being pumped into this research to make our environments more smart, more intelligent. This reveals new opportunities. So you see new application areas like uh, multimedia infotainment systems that will help a specific target group like our elderly to include them in society because, well, it, the definition of health is a, something that involves everything that has to do with the well-being of an elderly person. So if the elderly is included in a society and is happy, that elderly will stay healthier before even going to a doctor. Of course, we also address other opportunities or application areas like uh, healthcare and fitness and wellness, where we can actually exploit the devices, the sensory devices you are producing to gather this information and data and process it to actually evaluate the health state of a user. Other application areas involve lifestyle, sanitary systems, nutrition assistance, and energy management systems. But these opportunities also reveal new challenges.
And the, in the field of ambient intelligence, that means making our environment smarter, intelligent. We recognize that user interaction, the people for which this technology is meant to serve, have a problem. They are unable to interact with this, with this technology. They're able to exploit the benefits out of this technology if they're unable to use the services that this technologies provide. Most of these are embedded CE devices, consumer electronic devices, are so sophisticated with analog and digital interfaces, they, and most of them cannot be operated by various elderly persons, I mean various age or user groups like elderly persons, the less educated or the disabled. And sometimes it's so hard to actually have an overview of all the functionality that these services or these devices actually provide to the elderly. I would take a simple example like your cell phone. Most of us carry cell phones today, but we are unable to actually use a tenth of all the functionality found in our cell phones. We use them for sending SMS or sending or just making our normal calls. Well, these phones can actually do a lot more things. So we find a, we have a problem of the user being able to interact with this technology. What are the implications? The implications is that we have to derive new areas of research. We will have user interface design engineers focus on addressing task like integrating the huge functionality that this, this, this technology or these devices offer in a more coherent, easy, and natural interface. We also have to make it possible for the elderly person to assess the services in a very personalized form. We, in order to overcome these challenges, the user face designer or the design engineer should be able to understand the user's, more world, uh, more, uh, the, the user's world model and the context in which the user is working. So that the, 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 the user interface design engineer is able to seek new interaction techniques that are going to exploit the more natural ability of, the, of this elderly people. So I'm going to introduce a model for making user interface design decisions. And I, I have produced a couple of facts here how we arrive at some design decisions that we've considered in a model. We've made a study of uh, different design decisions that have already been addressed in other research works. We have made an analysis of common scenarios and the use cases of, uh, th that are involved in the activities that elderly people do in their day-to-day -day lives. And uh, we've considered things, uh, scenarios from a, a document that came out there called ISTAC for scenarios in ambient system living uh, to the year 2010. We've also considered scenarios defined in a project where Fraunhofer, Itaca, and others are uh, involved uh, in at the moment, a, a European project uh, addressing uh, common, uh, common scenarios for elderly people in their day-to-day -day lives. We've also examined uh, research efforts from people who address user categorization. That means classifying users into different user groups and extracting information that is essential in actually providing services based on the user who we have to provide a service to. Then we have also made a survey of different interaction techniques and uh, advanced I.O. devices. This is an except of a table showing some uh, interaction techniques and I.O. devices that we've looked at and we're trying to use this information to pump into a model that will make interaction with 